Hello everyone and welcome back. This is Dr. Amir Mohammed. I'm a GI medical oncologist and neuroendocrine tumor specialist at UH Seidman Cancer Center. Today we'll talk about the first step after a patient has a diagnosis of neuroendocrine tumor. It's usually very important for the first step that you have an accurate diagnosis so we can have the accurate type of imaging and the accurate treatment for you. Most of the patients, they're going to their primary care physicians and having variety non-specific symptoms. And these symptoms can develop and progress over many years. And sometimes the diagnosis of neuroendocrine tumors can be delayed for up to five to seven years in some circumstances if you don't know exactly what are the symptoms associated with neuroendocrine tumors. So there are two types of general symptoms. The first one is depend on where is the tumor located and the size of the tumor. So if the tumor, for example, located in the small bowel, it can cause bowel obstruction, and this can cause abdominal pain, constipation, nausea, and vomiting. And the other type of symptoms will depend on the hormone secretion of the tumor. And that's how we can categorize our cancers into functional or non-functional neuroendocrine neoplasms. And the type of hormones is really depend on where is your primary tumor at. So if some patient, for example, having their primary tumor in the small bowel or the lung, they tend to produce what we call serotonin, and these patients will have the same carcinoid features, including diarrhea, flushing over the skin, wheezes in your lungs. If we have another patient having the primary tumor in the pancreas, the type of hormones will be different. For example, if someone having increased increase in the insulin level, they tend to have low blood sugar, and these patients will have specific symptoms, include what we call the hypoglycemia features, palpitations, nervousness, irritable. But if the pancreas tumor is producing glucagon, for example, that will be opposite to the insulin, so they start having high level of blood sugar and also can having diarrhea, rash. And it's very important to discuss with your primary physician and your oncologist what type of symptoms you have exactly so we can order the right blood work as well as the right imaging. If the tumors are seen on the imaging, then the next step will be the surgical biopsy. And the surgical biopsy, we would like to have a specific tissue to know exactly what type of tumor cells the patient has. So in order to make sure that you got the most accurate lab results, you need also to discuss with your physician if there is any specific instructions, like specific type of food you need to avoid before testing, and if the patient need to be fasting before they get their test. The also specific type of medications that need to be avoided before we get this hormonal test to make sure that we have an accurate results. If the patient did not follow this specific direction, it can make the test results inaccurate. Some cancers also producing specific what we call markers or protein in the blood. And usually for a long time, we really do not have a specific neuroendocrine tumor marker in the blood. A very common one that we see it all the time is chromogranin A, which is specific protein contained in the vesicles of the neuroendocrine cells, and it tends to have some correlation with the disease progression. However, the chromogran A is not a very specific test, and we do not recommend ordering the chromogran A routinely for all the patients, because there are a lot of type of food and medication that can affect the level of the chromogran A. A food which is very common we eat every day, like tomato, avocado, kiwi, nuts, can really affect the level of chromogranin A. If the patient is pregnant, it also can affect her level of chromogranin A. And if the patient have a very common disease like uncontrolled blood pressure hypertension, or they're having problem with their kidney or even the liver, or they're taking specific medications like steroids, all these very common scenarios can really affect the level of chromogranin A, which is may not related to the neuroendocrine tumor of the patient. So we should not depend on this specific test for getting any imaging sooner or change our treatment. So it's very important to get the specific blood work correlated with your hormonal secretion if the patient has functional tumor, and also to put the chromogranin A in a specific right formation to make sure we don't order it for all the patient and we get an anxiety for the patient and the physician by having elevated chromogranin A that may be not related to the neuroendocrine tumor. And after that, it's very important to get the biopsy to make sure that we have a specific tissue and an accurate diagnosis, starting with your pathologist who is expertise in neuroendocrine tumors, will confirm the diagnosis and will make us start the journey in the right direction 
and offering the most optimum right treatment for our patients.